Hello, you all. My name is Ashley, and this is Royal Dominion Authority Global Ministries, where we walk by faith and not by sight, where we seek to add value to the lives of others, the same way that God adds value to our lives on the daily, and that is by him giving us his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, okay, who came to give us life, life more abundantly, and we shall live and not die. So, you all, I just wanted to encourage you all on this good Sunday. Um, as we enter into our new week, right, we already know that this is day one of a new week. But before we end this day, I wanted to just come and give you all a reminder. I wanted to come and inspire somebody, encourage someone in the Lord, okay, because you shall go on in strength and the Lord shall go ahead of you. And so when I came home from church, God told me to go and get into my word. Like, don't sit down and relax. I want you to get into the word because I want to share with you something. And I was like, okay, Lord. And so as I was um, meditating on the word of God, God spoke to me and wanted me to come and share this um, word with you guys to remind you all, right? To remind you all in this life, it's not going to be easy, right? But we know that what we are living for and who we are living for, we know that we are um, not living a life in vain. And so God wants us to have all of the tools necessary, all of the information necessary, all of, you know, everything that he wants to give us in his wisdom necessary, necessary in order for us to thrive, right, in society, to thrive in community, and to thrive as a body of believers. And so James chapter 1 James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces pace, patience. Produces patience. But let's, I don't know why I'm tongue tired. See, the enemy don't want me to get this out because I had to re record this video so many times because I kept getting tongue tired. But James chapter 1, verses 2 through eight, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because he is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So what God is saying is that when we look, when we look inside of our lives, in, inside of our personal lives, you know, what we have at home, whether it's family, whether it's career, a job, whether it's our finances, whether it's our health, whether it's our mind, our peace of mind that we should be having. Because a lot of people ain't living in peace nowadays. Like, it's so much going on around us. And when we take a look outside and we look around and we look at what's going on in the world, right, we're seeing a lot of things that is going on. But what God is saying is to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Count it all joy when you have trials that come in your life and, and it looks like everything is all bad or it looks like nothing can be done about it or it just looks too hard. Listen, nothing is too hard for the Lord our God. God told that to Abraham when, when Sarah thought that she was barren and wasn't able to produce at 99 years old or at 90 years old, or 100 years old, however old she was, God heard her laughing, right? And God said, is anything too hard for the Lord? So God is saying, listen, when you see various trials begin to operate in your life, count it all joy. Don't sit around and cry about it. Don't sit around and, and, and sit and pity about it. Don't sit around and look for people to feel sorry for you. Listen, count it all joy. Get up and praise God, even in your storm. Praise God, even in your pain. 
Praise God, even in your sadness, praise God, even in your loneliness, praise God, even in your weariness, praise God, even when you're down and out, praise God, even when it feels like all hell is breaking loose, praise God, even when it feels like you are out of your mind, God is saying, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. In the New King James Version, it says, various trials. Because guess what? The life that we live when we said yes to God and, and we came out of the world, some people are still living in the world, right? Okay. But we ain't talking about that right now. But when you said yes to God and you, when you said that, God, I am going to be committed to you, God, I am going to um, allow the Lord to lead the way. God did not say that it was not going to be trials. He did not, not promise us that everything was going to be a-okay and that every day that we wake up, we was going, going to be smiling. He didn't say every day, day that we wake up, we wasn't going to get a headache. He didn't say every day that we wake up, we was going to be, you know, up and at them and, 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 and tackling everything and conquering everything. Like sometimes when we wake up, we feel like we have been conquered. But what what is God saying? Listen, counting all joy knowing that the testing of your faith, because when the various trials come, that means that your faith is being tested. And God is saying, knowing that the testing of your faith, you have to know what the testing of your faith is producing in this hour, okay? It is producing patience. If you can look back over your life, listen, as I look back over my life, and think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. Listen, I have a testimony. And so what God is doing, God is building your testimony. When you look back over your life, right? And you think things over, you can see that even when you went through before, you made it out, you overcame some things. So you can say that you had patience. Even though at times your patience was running thin, even though at times you thought that your patience was going to run out because the enemy was trying you, because somebody in your family tried you, because one of your friends tried you, somebody somebody almost um made you go across their head. But God is saying that I was producing patience in you. And so what you have to do even now, because we are in a whole nother season. We not where we were last year. We are not where we were 10 years ago. We are not where we were on yesterday. I hope not, right? God is saying, I am producing patience in you. And so the patience that I produce in you is going to have its perfect work, okay? And so when I was studying, I was like, patience, God. Okay, God, thank you for patience. And so God was like, yep, I want you to Google the definition of patience. And so the definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay. In other words, of delay are trouble, um, forbearance, restraint, self-restraint, um, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So what God is saying is that even though we're going through these fiery trials, right? Even though we're going through what we're going through, God is saying that patience is being produced. It's just like when you take a seed and you dig up the soil, you dig up the fallow ground, you cultivate the land on which the seed that you are going to plant in the ground, you plant your seed, whatever you got to do to um, plant a plant. I never planted before. I'm not a farmer. I've never planted before, but spiritually I have planted many seeds and I have seen many fruit grow from the seeds that I've planted. But one thing about it, we know that we got to dig up the earth. We know that we got to dig up some soil in order to drop that seed in the ground. And then what do we have to do? We got to cover that seed back up with dirt. After we cover it with dirt, we still have to water that thing to make sure that it is going to grow and produce the seed of which you have planted. So whatever it is that you have planted in previous seasons, you are going to reap that. Whatever it is that you are planting in this season, you are going to reap it. And God is saying in this season, I need you to be planting patience. 
Why? Because it's going to work for my glory. Patience is going to give you purpose. Patience is going to give you clear vision. Patience is going to give you the knowledge and the wisdom that you need to continue to go on. Patience is going to give you the instruction that you need. Come on. Who am I talking to? Patience got to have its perfect work in you so that when you do come up against certain things, you'll be able to withstand it. Why? Because you have patience. Why? Because even when you're exhausted and tired and worn out and feel like giving up and feel like throwing in the towel, you still have patience to go forth when God says go then you can still go, okay? Why? Because you are allowing patience to have its complete and perfect work in your life. How does that work? You yield to the Holy Ghost. That is how that works. You obey the word of the Lord, okay? If God tells you to go right, you go right, okay? Don't go to the left if he tells you to go right because God is ordering your steps. If God is saying, yes, yes, my child, I know that you are down today. You have every right, right? Sometimes we have every right to feel the way that we feel. But what God is saying, don't stay in that way. Don't stay in that mindset. Don't stay in that situation. Get up and give me praise. Get up and pray. Get up and worship me. Get up and turn some worship music on. Get up and open your mouth and give me praise so that I can give you more patience, so that I can give you more strength, so that I can endow you with more of my power, with more of my love, okay? So that you can see life the way that I gave you when I gave you those, those eyes that you are looking at, seeing through right now. God is saying you'll be able to have clear vision and see the way that I see, okay? Because guess what God says? If any of you lacks wisdom, ask him, and he who gives wisdom to you will give it to you liberally. That means when when you're not understanding something, if something seems delayed or set back, or if something seems out of whack, or you just need clarity on some things, if you need new vision on some things, if you need some instruction because you feel like you don't know which way you're going, you don't know if you're going left or right, even if you feel like you know what you know, but you want more of God, God is saying, if you want my wisdom, ask, ask me for more wisdom and I will give it to you and I will give it freely. I won't punish you if you're asking wisdom from me, okay? I'm not going to put you on punishment because you want to you want more of me. I am going to give you more of me because that is my desire for you says the Lord God. And it will be given unto you, okay? But when you ask for wisdom, when you ask for knowledge, when you ask for understanding, when you ask for God to open up the the the, the flood gates, when you ask God God to open windows, you know, open doors, not open windows, but I do see a window of blessing over your head. But when you ask God to open up doors for you, listen, ask in faith. Ask believing that he will do it. If it's in his will, you see, you got to seek out God to know the will of God for your life. Because if you don't know the will of God for your life, how can you ask God for the things that you need if you don't know what you need? That was deep. Somebody type that out in the comments and I'll pin it because somebody needs to hear that again. But that was that was deep. Okay. So ask in faith, do not doubt when you ask God. You got to trust that God is going to move on your behalf. Listen, you all, God gave me a dream this morning. And when I woke up, I thought the dream was kind of bad. But when I woke up, it was actually a dream of blessings. It was actually a dream of um, abundance. It was a dream of revelation just like fresh glory like fresh revelation like who god listen 
when you're trusting in God for some things, especially if you've been through hell all your life, listen, you ain't even just got to be all your life, but you've been through a season of hell, you've been going through time, time you know, um, a trial of a time, times, times of trial, and you're like, God, I need you to move. And it seems like he's not moving, right? It seems like he's not speaking or he's speaking to you, but it's, it, it, he's speaking in a language that you don't understand. That's when you go before his throne boldly and you seek the face of the Lord and whatever it is that you're seeking God for, you believe that God is going to show up. Even when it don't look like he's showing up, you continue to believe, okay? Because why? It says, if you ask God of things and you don't ask it in faith, that means you are a doubter, right? God knows that we're going to have these worldly feelings, these worldly emotions about ourselves because it is human nature. We are a fallen, we live in a fallen state, right? Human nature lives in a fallen state. It's natural, right? It's called sin. Doubting is a sin. Having a double mind is a sin. So what God is saying, I'm going to bring you out from all of that double minding and, and doubting and uncertainty and stressing and guessing about certain things. And I am going to give you the mysteries of heaven. I am going to open up heaven for you and give you fresh revelation. But when you come to me and seek me, have faith. If you doubt, it is going to delay. It's going to delay. It's going to delay. How you put seed in the ground and you doubt if the seed is going to grow? Come on. We got to stop doing it. If we continue to have that type of mindset, we are going to stay in the same place when God is calling up, us up higher. Listen, I'm speaking to, to royal dominion authority, a royal priesthood. A peculiar nation, okay? A peculiar nation, a special people, people who were called to form the government of God. We were called to form God's government, okay? God has employed us in his kingdom to form his government. And so how can we say that we are the church of God, right? The body of Christ and we don't have no power. We don't have no authority. We don't believe that God is going to do it. Why? Because we don't have patience. And so what God is doing right now in your life, God is allowing you to see certain things. He allowing you to hear certain things. He is allowing you to experience and encounter certain things because what he is growing patience in you. And so you got to trust in God and have faith. It says, don't you doubt because if you have a mind of doubt, you'll be like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And we know that a person that is driven and tossed by the wind is going over here, over there, over here, over there. They just can't get right. But God is saying he is planting you in this season. He is establishing you in this season. He is giving you what he has promised you in this season. But if you are not planted, if you're going to and fro in your mind, if you're going back and forth in your mind, you're going to miss what he places in your hand because you are not properly, your, your mind, right? Your spirit, your soul is not properly aligned with his word so that when he goes to give those gifts out, you're going, you're, you're missing the gift that he's handing you. When he say that your seed shall produce fruit and you're doubting that your plant is going to grow the same, the same seed that you put in the ground, you doubting that it's going to spring up. You're doubting that it's going to grow. You're, you're, you're stifling growth. It's like stifled growth. Let me look up stifled. Because I don't even know if that's a word, but it sounds like it is. Stifled growth. It's like you're stiffing your growth. You're stiffing your growth. Okay. Stifle. 
to make someone unable to breathe properly or suffocate. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit. So God is saying that when you do that, you are suppressing your anointing. And so you're suffocating everything that God breathes. When God breathes on you, God breathes in you as well so that you will have life. But if you are not believing the way that God says to believe, you are going to suffocate yourself. That is self-sabotage. That's self-sabotage. You're going to kill your own self before you even receive what God told you to receive. Okay? And so God is saying, don't be double-minded in this season. God is doing something great. And so we have to be ready. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. We got to be ready because the promised land, we're getting ready to cross over. And so we don't want to suffocate in our doubt. We don't want to live a life of misery and be suffocated and, 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 and um, not growing in areas where we should be growing. So whatever God says, put your hands on and touch, you got to touch it. You got to put your hand in that thing and you got to work that thing like you ain't never worked it before. Okay, yes, God knows you're going to be fearful. He knows that you're going to have questions. Ask. He knows that you're not going to know everything. That is why God says, ask. Do not be, be, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift comes from above and it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of shadow or turning of his own will. He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And so, like I said before, every good and perfect gift comes down from the father above. Listen, God dwells in that high place, in that secret place, in that exalted place. Okay. In the heaven, in the heavenly realms. And so, Anything that God promises you, anything that God says that he has and it has your name on it, it is a good gift and it is perfect just for you, tailor-made, just for you. So don't allow the enemy to deceive you out of what God has for you. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you out of what God has for you. So in layman terms, don't be tricked and fooled out of your blessing. Because God got something that he about to place, well, he's already put it in your hands, but you probably don't realize it just yet. But God is about to open up your eyes, okay? And once God opens your eyes, you are going to see it, that it has been there the whole time. It's been there the whole time. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy turned to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So there are 10 commandments just in this verse. In James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, James gave us 10 commandments to do. When you do these 10 things, you will begin to see God's hand move in areas in your life where you have saw delay, where you have saw setback where you have procrastinated in, where you have been moving slow in, where you've been slowful and lazy in, or where you just was doubting in, and you knew that God was going to do it, but you just had so much doubt that you were deceived. And it had your mind every which way. Here are 10 things you need to do. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts, you double mind. Lament, mourn, and weep, okay? Lament, mourn, and weep. God is saying that you, God is not saying that you can't be joyful and rejoice. You're supposed to do that every day of your life. But God is saying in this season, if you want what he has for you, 
You need to go before the Lord God and you need to seek his face like never before. You need to cry out. You need to spend time in that secret place because God is getting ready to reveal some things to you in this hour. And it is called for a lamenting. Go before God and cry out, mourn and weep. Okay, that's eight. Nine, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy be turned to gloom. So areas where you too happy and you too giddy and you too comfortable. Mm -mm. God is saying, humble yourself, which is number 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he is going to lift you up. Listen, God is going to do those things. God is going to do those things. The wind blew, the storm came, but guess what? Your house was built on a solid foundation. Your house was built on the rock. Your house was built on a solid foundation. So when the, when the wind came and when the storm was brewing and blowing in your life and you were seeing them waves rise up against you, God placed you in a high place. God, God, God hid you for a time such as this and you are about to be revealed. God is about to bring you out of hiding, but you have to do those 10 things, okay? And you need, you got to keep your trust and your hope in God. Continue to trust and hope in God. Continue to go before the Lord. Humble yourself. Don't, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, okay? You might know some things, but you don't know it all. And you continue to be productive in the things that God told you to to be productive in and you continue to wait on the Lord God, okay? Your waiting is not in vain, okay? Continue to wait on the Lord your God. And I have some other stuff that I got to share with you all, but it'll probably be sometime this week. Um, God is doing some things. He's moving. He's shifting some things. He's turning some things. And you have to remain in position. Don't look at what, what's going on in the world. Don't let that phase you. Don't let that stuff deceive you. God is still moving in this hour. God is moving for his remnant, okay? God is moving. He's moving. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Listen, I love you all. Again, my name is Ashley. This is Royal Domain Authority Global Ministries. If you need or want any prayer requests or me to um, um, join forces with you in taking down the enemy, I got you. If you want me to agree with you on some things, listen, email me, royaldominion20 at yahoo.com, royaldominion20 at yahoo.com. It's in the description box. Listen, you all, be blessed. Go forth in peace. If you don't have the patience that you need to have in this season, go ahead and pray and ask God to give you that patience so that you can endure the time of testing, okay? And let patience have its perfect work in you. I love you all. Be blessed.